People over 64 years of age should not view this video without consent of their children. Some content may be inappropriate for older, more confused YouTubers. Huh? What did he say? Did you hear what he said? <laughs> Greetings everyone, this is Time Rider. You know, I've been trying to get this car done for about three weeks and between the snow and some paint issues, I just never seem to make it happen. This is the Matchbox 1956 Jaguar XK140 and it will be the first official video in the One of One series, a new feature on my channel. I guess that all customs are a one of one, uh, irrespective of who does them. So I guess one of one is just something to call it other than a custom. However, I do hope to make these something special, especially as I get better at it. Anyway, I saw this casting at the Dollar General and thought it looked like a pretty cool casting, uh, as it was, and I decided to see if I could elevate it even further. So stick around. I really like the casting and it, it kind of reminded me of something that Lesney might have done back in the day. And uh, you know I'll tell you I'm really gonna regret losing those tampos because I actually kind of liked them but uh, it wasn't anything startlingly unusual. A couple of a uh, couple of posts and uh, a plastic base which is pretty common nowadays so but getting it apart was a, a pretty standard deal the actual car was actually uh, introduced in late 1954 uh, and they they introduced it as a 1955 model year this casting was put together pretty well and into the primordial ooze. You know, I, I really thought they did a nice job on this casting and uh, I liked the color and everything. I just uh, was curious to see if I could make it into something better. And of course, once the paint is off of it, well then uh, that's the point where you uh, start working on your prep you know um i think how much you prepare a casting is you know just has such a huge impact on on how your end result looks and i you know i have a process i guess probably everybody does mine usually includes uh a good wire brushing followed by uh four aught steel wool then I typically polish and I polished this one too I just don't have any footage of it and I usually follow up the the polish with a, a wash and uh, here I'm using lacquer thinner Yeah, it's a really, really well-built casting. You know, sometimes you, these castings, once you get the paint off, you find that what they did to make up for their crappy casting was put the paint on real thick. And that wasn't the case here. I got it all cleaned up, though, and it dawned on me that I hadn't drilled out these posts yet. And uh, I wanted to put it back together with button screws, so... That was going to have to be done. That's why I'm wearing the gloves. Uh, I didn't want to do anything to the surface that I had already prepared. So That's a 2-56 tap. I'm sure you've heard me say it before. 
Uh, no, I don't have a link to it. If you go on Google and type in 2-56 tap, uh, you'll get all kinds of places that want to sell them to you. Probably find it on Amazon too. Same with the button screw. When you're tapping these things, you do have to be careful. Uh, if you feel it's starting to bind, you need to back out a little bit. Uh, sometimes it's good just to do a little bit of back and forth when you're doing it anyway. And get her all done. There it is. One other thing I've started doing, and I'm not going to show you this because I still had to figure out a good way to film it. I screwed this up really bad. Uh, but I started using polishing compounds. All I had there was two minutes of the back of my hand, so you didn't miss anything. And then once I get a good polish on it, um, now it's time for some, some uh, Spectraflame green. You know, I'm still pretty new to Spectraflame. I've done a few few things in it, but you know, I'll tell you one thing that I have learned is if you're going to use this on a, on a casting, the casting does have to be nearly perfect. And oftentimes that means that there's a lot of sanding involved. You know, I see people use this sometime, and I'm not going to throw anybody under the bus here, but when you look at the surface of their casting through the Spectraflame paint, uh, you can see nicks and other things. And that, you know, because spe Spectraflame, you know, it's prone to pooling. So... Uh, you know, you have to be really careful when you put it on, too. But if there's nicks and stuff, you're going to see them. And I'll tell you, not that this particular casting that I'm doing here turned out perfect. Uh, but I don't think there's anything wrong with trying to achieve that. So here's the front of the car after painting. And they, you know, they did. They had a neat grill tampo on there that, you know, I'm not even sure how to duplicate that. I suppose I could have done it with a decal, but then I have those little 3D resin headlights I made for it. Uh, and detailing it, for some reason on the original, the front pieces weren't detailed at all. And uh, of course the back was, so I just did both. And no, I don't paint that fast. And yes, my hand does shake a little bit when I do this. Anyway, I'm going to go back to where the whole thing started because I want you to see it again. Um, especially those tampos, there's two, you know, the three on the front, uh, the headlight, the grill. Um, I suppose I could have tried to create a decal, you know, I didn't. Uh, then there's the uh, number plate on the back. Somebody suggested I should keep these wheels. I don't think that they're very nice looking wheels. They're the typical cheap hard plastic ones you see on a lot of the die cast today but anyway let's um, take a look at where I wound up well I didn't care for the original wheels I did like the style of them uh, I did use some clear yellow on the front turn signals I'm not happy with the grill on this thing I, I really should have thought of a better way to handle that and I guess I could have made a number plate for the back, too. And I know it seems like, oh, gee, you know, why am I pointing out all the flaws? I think it turned out beautiful. I do. Uh, it's not that. I just, you know, every job I do, I look at it and say, what could I have done better? And I'm not happy with that girl. There's a lot of things about it, though, that I am very happy with. Uh, I'm going to have an episode of The Bench afterwards, so stick around if that's your kind of thing. Otherwise, uh, this is Time Rider, and I'll leave the light on for you. Hey, thanks for hanging around for this episode of The Bench. Hey, first of all, I got to give a shout out to this guy because, uh, you know, old man me forgot to uh, give him his due mention uh, as a participant in the Grand Prix Invitational. Devil's Details Diecast. So, uh, yeah, look forward to his submission next weekend. So, have you ever seen one of these? Uh, 
I think it's pronounced Maisto, but I'm probably butchering the hell out of that. Anyway, I'm going to see if I can't uh, find something entertaining to do with this. So, uh, And then uh, last, but certainly not least, uh, I had put up a poll on my community page uh, as to the February Three Blind Mice uh, casting, and it seems like everybody wants to see that uh, Anglia uh, Hot Wheels. So that's what uh, we'll be doing in February. As always, thumb up or thumb down, doesn't matter to me. I hope you like it, but if you don't, that's fine too. If you're going to make a comment, please be respectful, and uh, see you next time.